Welcome everyone. If you're looking at the slide deck right now, then you already know that this presentation has been recorded in advance in the last week of December, 2020. Normally you'd be inside a darkened ballroom space, gearing up to be transfixed by a cavalcade of images and data that attempt to describe the year that was through the prism of Wisconsin's renewable energy landscape. Though this year's trip through 2020 will be a relatively solitary affair, hopefully it will prove to be no less valuable than those of years past. This presentation was recorded on December 30th, 2020, two days before the year actually ended. It is not as encyclopedic as its predecessors, especially with respect to residential um, solar information. For example, we do not have any focus on energy results to share right now. However, we do expect to receive that data in the next two to three weeks. And we plan to update these slides with that body of information probably in early February. 2020 was the first year since 2017 in which renewable generating capacity increased by more than 100 megawatts. Unlike in 2017, a year when wind power accounted for much of that new capacity, all the renewable generation placed in service this year is solar powered. Today, we have 330 megawatts of solar power capacity in operation. Of that total, about two thirds injects electricity directly to the utility grid and about one third supplies individual utility customers. Regarding We Energy Solar Now program, that capacity is a bit of a guesstimate. And as mentioned before, the focus on energy's 2020 results have yet to be compiled and distributed. Their totals may change once we have a full year's results. But we do know for a fact today that three installations, Two Creek Solar Park, Middleton Maury Field, and Dane County Airport were placed in service this year, combining for 164 megawatts. Setting two creeks aside, it turns out that 2020 was much like 2019 in terms of solar installation activity and results. The coronavirus outbreak appears not to have had a major effect on the solar marketplace, at least thus far. We do know that there were a number of installations in the commercial, industrial, institutional sector that were delayed or put on hold this year. Now that the investment tax credit has been extended at the 26% level through the end of 2022, it is reasonable to expect an uptick, uptick next year for this particular market sector. Now we shift from solar generation capacity that was placed in service in 2020 to solar capacity in the development and permitting pipeline. The tables you will see were prepared in house using publicly available information from sources such as the Public Service Commission. In 2020, the PSC approved four solar farms, a totaling 378 megawatts of generating capacity, while local governments okayed three solar farms, totaling 199 megawatts of generating capacity. All in all, Permits in 2020 were issued for 577 megawatts of solar compared with the 600 megawatts of solar power approved for construction last year. This is another data point demonstrating that COVID's impact on the solar landscape has been negligible. This January, the PSC will rule on a solar farm proposal from Savion Energy. This 150 megawatt facility would be situated in Wood County a few miles from Wisconsin Rapids. Wood County is the first large solar farm proposed for development in central Wisconsin. Now, now it's time for some fun with multiplication and division. When you look at the size of these projects and attempt to ascertain the impact of these projects when they start producing power, the numbers on this slide become very important. The denominator here 
is the number of megawatt hours of electricity sold in Wisconsin over the previous calendar year. 69 million plus megawatt hours. The numerator here is the anticipated annual output from a utility scale solar plant. We expect 100 megawatts of utility scale solar to generate about 215,000 megawatt hours of electricity a year. For the purpose of these calculations, we assume that the solar panels will be mounted on single axis tracking systems, resulting in a capacity factor of nearly 23%. So you can see at the uh, bottom line that 325 megawatts of solar is what it takes to produce about 1% of Wisconsin electricity sales. Okay, so now we come to the question of how much solar generating capacity is under active development. In answering this question, we will include in the 20 projects referenced in this slide, the three solar farms that were placed in service in 2020. We will assume the following. First, all the capacity shown in this slide will be approved and constructed in the next four years. Second, as noted before, it takes about 325 megawatts of solar power located in Wisconsin to generate the equivalent of 1% of the state's electricity consumption. So our conclusion is this. There is enough utility scale solar in the pipeline and construction in the permitting and construction pipeline to account for 7% of Wisconsin's electricity sales. We also would add that this is a very conservative estimate. We are quite confident that these numbers will be revised upwards over the next 12 months. The chart on this slide comes from the Strategic Energy Assessment 2020 to 2026. This document was recently issued by the Public Service Commission. The chart here projects a modest reduction in carbon dioxide emissions from Wisconsin's electricity sector based on utility provided information available in the summer of 2020. Now, following the release of the current strategic energy assessment, We Energies announced its intention to retire its South Oak Creek coal-fired power plant, which totals almost 1,200 megawatts of capacity. More solar farms have been proposed in the intervening period. When all is said and done, we believe the fleet conversion now underway will accelerate and will yield more dramatic emissions reductions than what is depicted on this slide. In May of 2020, Alliant Energy's Wisconsin utility filed an application to acquire 675 megawatts of solar capacity spread across six solar farms. If approved, Alliant would be well on its way to becoming the largest owner operator of solar power in Wisconsin by a wide margin. Yet the utility plans to submit another request to acquire more solar power uh, than the first six solar farms uh, shown on this slide, as soon as the commission rules on that pending application. All told, Align plans to spend about $1.3 billion on more than one gigawatt of new solar capacity over the next five years. In a span of three days in early November, three news stories came out that in our estimate, estimation confirms the hypothesis that solar power has become the default electric generating resource on a going forward basis. In the first of these news stories, the joint owners of the Two Creek Solar Park announced that their 150 megawatt solar power plant had been placed in service and is now producing electricity for their customers. In the second news story from that week, We Energies announced plans to close down the four units at its South Oak Creek power plant no later than 2024. These units, totaling nearly 1,200 megawatts of capacity, have been generating electricity for We Energies since the early 1960s. Even more remarkable, however, was a utilities disclosure that the plant would be replaced by a combination of solar power, wind power, and large scale battery storage. In the third news story from that week, 
Dane County Executive Joe Parisi stood on a cornfield near Cottage Grove, which the county had recently purchased, and announced plans to build a 16 megawatt solar farm there. The property is in Alliant Energy territory. Even though Dane County has built nearly one megawatt of solar to serve its own facilities, in addition to purchasing the output from an mg &E owned solar farm on county airport property, it is Dane County's aim to continue to facilitate solar power for its own use until it offsets 100% of its electrical consumption with solar power. What follows is a brief travelogue through Wisconsin, which we stop and take note of the new installations across the state that definitely showcase renewable energy's economic appeal to widening segments of the energy marketplace. Here are the numbers on Two Creeks Solar Park, which was, energy, which was energized in November. In addition, uh, for another six months or so, Two Creeks will produce more electricity than the combined output from all other existing solar systems in the state of Wisconsin. Adjacent to Middleton's Municipal Airport, MG&E's Maury Field Project is the first utility owned offsite solar installation serving individual customers under long-term power purchase agreements. The output from this installation is sold to the city of Middleton and the Middleton Cross Plains School District. Maury Field also does double duty by generating electricity on behalf of mg &E shared solar program subscribers. Now operational, the nine megawatt solar farm at the northern end of airport property is the largest in Dane County and currently the largest array supplying a single customer, which happens to be Dane County. And this is all again through a long term power purchase agreement. We Energy's Solar Now program is an example of a customer hosted solar program. Under this arrangement, We Energies finds a customer amenable to hosting an offsite solar array on its property. The output from this installation flows directly into the grid, bypassing the system host. Project sizes under this program range from a minimum of 300 kilowatts to a maximum of 2.25 megawatts. The largest of the We Energies arrays installed this year is the one situated on a Harley Davidson production facility in Menominee Falls. ONH Danish Bakery, a favored source of Kringles in Southeast Wisconsin, added 31 kilowatts of solar PV this year, supplementing the 152 kilowatts uh, installed by Pewaukee based SunVest Solar back in 2016. La Crosse based Quick Trip now provides solar powered baked goods to its many Wisconsin stores thanks to their new 532 kilowatt rooftop array designed and installed by Madison-based Sunpeak. Thanks to the philanthropy of Cal and Lori Couillard, Renew operates a grant program in place to support mission-based nonprofits desiring to power themselves with solar energy to generated on site. Solar for Good provides a layer of financial support targeted to a market segment that, is, that values solar, but is often cash strapped and unable to take advantage of federal tax credits. This 84 kilowatt array is located on the grounds of Covenant Lutheran Church in Stoughton. This 29 kilowatt project in Oregon, serving a house of worship, took advantage of a Solar for Good grant and financing from Legacy Solar Co-op. Madison-based full-spectrum solar designed and installed the array. Aspirus is a healthcare organization serving much of central and northern Wisconsin, as well as Michigan's Upper Peninsula. It has 10 hospitals, more than 50 clinics, labs, and other service-providing facilities within its system. In 2018, Aspirus launched a system-wide initiative to identify and implement strategies for slashing its energy overhead and scaling back its carbon footprint. Since 2018, Aspirus has commissioned the installation of eight solar arrays across its system, approaching one megawatt in total. 
Legacy Solar Co-op and Hayward-based Carlson Electric installed 116 kilowatts of solar on three apartment buildings spread ac across Solar County. These apartment buildings serve several dozen tenants in total. Each unit receives solar electricity directly from these arrays. A Solar for Good grant enabled the Dodge County Housing Authority to put 104 kilowatts on, on, on a new residential development in Horicon. Midwest Solar Power designed and installed these arrays, which supplies electricity to individual tenants in this complex. Installation activity held steady with municipalities this year. Eagle Point installed more than 400 kilowatts of rooftop solar power on four City of La Crosse buildings, including the library, and a 32 kilowatt array for the village of Dickeyville. Plymouth-based Arch Electric designed and installed a 26 kilowatt array for Sheboygan's water utility. A third generation family owned business in Oregon, Tice moved into a new campus at the Oregon Business Park over the summer. Tice teamed up with Legacy Solar Cooperative to secure funding sources for a new solar system that could supply up to 50% of the company's usage. After being awarded a USDA Rural Energy for America program grant, the company partnered with co-op member Arch Electric, headquartered in Plymouth, with service across much of the state to install a 300 kilowatt solar system outfitted with bifacial panels. Two years ago, Dane County broke ground on a biogas processing facility that converts trash and cow manure into renewable natural gas. In addition to powering its own vehicles, this fuel is also injected into a nearby interstate transmission pipeline. The Yahara plant started operating in April 2020 and is now accepting pipeline ready renewable natural gas from dairy digesters around the county, including a Wanakee area facility now owned by Brightmark Energy. In partnership with Couillard Solar Foundation, Midwest Renewable Energy Association operates a solar on schools program that provides Wisconsin K through 12 public schools and colleges access to an in-kind module grant valued up to $20,000. Applicants are eligible to apply for one grant for each school building installing solar. Collectively spending more than $175 million a year on energy expenses, Wisconsin school districts are steadily warming up to solar power. Oregon School District recently commissioned the first net zero energy school in the state of Wisconsin. Designed and installed by Madison-based Full Spectrum Solar, this 646 kilowatt DC, 500 kilowatt AC installation is sized to offset 100% of the energy used on site. The district's new school is certain to fulfill its promise as both a place of learning for children and a living laboratory for using carbon neutral technologies and design. Solar contractors are adding battery storage to their repertoire of products and services. Over the years, SunVest Solar has provided more than 1800 kilowatts of solar PV to a multitude of facilities operated by the Forest County Potawatomi community. This year, they designed a solar and storage system for the tribe's data center in Milwaukee. In 2019, Northwind Solar Cooperative decided to move out of Stevens Point and break ground on a new building in Amherst. With 44 kilowatts of PV capacity, multiple battery configurations, and EV charging, Northwind's new headquarters building invites prospective customers to envision an all-electric house or business anchored by a solar plus storage energy package. And that's a wrap.